I, I had to ditch the bike and it crashed into a tree and then the pedal actually ripped out of the threads. So no I had way. to uh, so I had to replace that crank arm. Seth from Seth's Bike Hacks rides his bike hard. And when he stopped by our headquarters for a visit, we were excited to help him assemble his bike and look for any problems or fixes. Let's see. Yeah, we might want to take a look at that. I think we've got... Yeah, that's a little... A little tight. A little tight. Great. The cranks were tight. And after removing them, the first thing we did was feel the bearings. Yeah, definitely. Ooh, that, those bearings is... are sweet on that side. We got butter over here. It should be feeling better than it was. I think we got a okay. preload. Yeah, I think we have a preload issue. issue. Okay. So what do we mean by preload issue? Well, bearings are a finicky bunch. They need just the right amount of pressure applied to the side in order to achieve the smooth-like butter feel. With no preload, bearings have play and will wear fast. But with correct preload, the bearings roll nicely along these two channels with small gaps on opposite sides. Too much preload creates friction and binding. And after we took off Seth's crank, we found an interesting clue. This, this was already backed out. All the way. All the way. So. All the way. Yeah, yeah. So let's show the ring here should be rotated into the bearing. This was already backed all the way out. Uh, so it, it was in the loosest position. If these are just a wee bit thick, um, they're going to also squish the bearings too much. Too much. Hmm. Let's look at that again. So this mechanism lets us fine tune the preload. It's threaded so we can tighten or loosen it. And when it's just right, we could lock it in place with the screw. And seeing the preload ring backed into the crank told us we probably need to free up space in the system to allow for proper adjustment. Let's have a peek in our bag of tricks here. 30 millimeter spindle. Do we have anything thinner? So Calvin was searching for a thinner dust seal and I was searching for the schematic of the original manufacturer spec. My thought is that that spacer on the non-drive side should be there. And it turned out that was indeed the case. But Calvin had already installed a thinner seal and was testing it out before I could break the news that the external cup spacer should have never been there. Oh, then I am a hack in the good sense of the word. Okay. Because you, uh, he says um, the spacer under the cup is wrong, right? So I'm fixing it on the quick and easy. Hey, mine was a quicker fix because I didn't have to remove the bottom bracket. I had the thinner seal on hand, so I really wasn't sacrificing performance. But in the end, we liked to follow spec. So we pulled it apart, followed the original manufacturer's spec, and again, the crank felt buttery smooth. I think Feels really good. I think compared to what we had, we have I've done some good. So there's not always one way to do it right. That's what I think. I'm as long as the concept is there. That's right. We generally want to follow the, the, the laws of physics. If you break them, it, it tends to. Yeah, things yeah. Come, you went to another down. dimension. <laughs> it's always good to know and follow the factory spec. But sometimes, knowing what the system is trying to achieve allows for a different hack. I mean fix. One, two, if you don't have all the possible resources at hand. So, what's next? Let's keep rolling. And that's episode one of three, where we're supposed to be assembling Seth's bike. But on the next episode, we do a bit more disassembly. And by the way, Seth, we wish you a speedy recovery from the recent crash at Berm Creek. So, how's the bike? <laughs>